Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. So, the audio might be a little bit rough, but I wanted to get this video out as my first video because I've been thinking about it forever and I know you all have asked for it, so here we are. I made a series on TikTok called Trying Perfumes You Recommended, and I have made over 30 parts, which is absolutely insane. I've gotten the most amazing recommendations, some real stinkers, but I don't blame you. And I'm going to tell you now, out of the 500 plus perfumes that I have tried over the past year, year, which ones I liked enough to buy a full bottle of. This is not my full collection. These are only the perfumes that I have found out about through all of you. I can make a separate video on my entire collection, but for now, let's dive in. For those of you who are new to me, my face, my TikTok, and here, because this is brand spanking new, my tastes in perfume mostly are no gourmands, nothing too sweet, and nothing too vanilla heavy. So I'm gonna have four categories that I'm gonna go through. Musks, spring, summer, autumn, and then my most special scents. Let's jump into it. First up, musks. This is Musky Aldehydes by Dossier. This is actually the dupe for Byredo Blanche, and I think it is a great dupe. I think it's 39 bucks. This is a very clean, musky white floral. You can layer it on everything. It's so good. I will say I tried the Te Noir Lilabo Dossier dupe called Citrus Tea, and I was not a fan. I do not think it smells good at all. So I, I, don't, I don't recommend that one. Next up, we have Dead Cool Milk. This is a layering fragrance. So how I use this perfume is after the shower, once I moisturize, I like to spray on the musks, but especially this one, since it is a layering fragrance, that just adds like a little something to all of your other fragrances. It is a also a white floral musk, but I would say this one is slightly sweeter than the musky aldehydes one. With this layering perfume, I just feel like it extends my library of perfumes that I already have because it does add that little something something to your other scents. Next one I like so much that I own Eau de Parfum, the body oil, and the regular old roll-on perfume oil. And that is Rosy by by Rosy Jane. This is a very light rose musk. If you don't like roses, I wouldn't recommend this, obviously. I personally love the scent of rose. I have Red Roses by Jo Malone, which is a great fragrance that is just pure red roses, like a fresh bouquet of red roses. And then my go-to evening scent is Rose 31 by The Labo. So if you are a fan of rose, this is literally like a kiss of rose and it's so lovely. This one I did not purchase, but I did find out about through all of you, and that is Pear Ink by Juliet Has a Gun. I have had the pleasure of working with the brand and so I was gifted this particular bottle, but I love it so much that I'm going to talk about because I would have bought a full bottle of it. This is a pear musk. It is sweet, but not too sweet. It's sweet in the way a regular pear is, you know, juicy, crisp, fresh pear. Father Figure by Fleur. I have a travel size of this because I don't think I would purchase the full bottle. I think this is all I need. And I am including this because again, I did buy this. So I obviously like it. This is like musky aftershave. There's like a, a masculine kind of quality to it that I just really like. The image that comes to my mind are Levi jeans and a crisp white t-shirt. I think of 90s, 90s nostalgia. We are now gonna move into my musk slash spring scents. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is Parisian Musk by Matière Première. I do only have a five mil bottle, but that is because I cannot afford to buy full bottles of all of these amazing, delicious perfumes that I want so badly. So I am including the five mils because this is taking the place of a full bottle that will one day be in my life. This is a fruity, flowery, musky musk. Think of, it's a beautiful, like crisp spring day turning from winter to spring. And so there's that one day where you're outside and the sun is on your face and you can feel and like smell spring in the air. That is what this scent smells like to me. It kind of transports me to my favorite place that I've ever been in the springtime. For me, that's Edinburgh, Scotland. But for you, it might be Paris, which would check out. But like, same thing, you know, it gets like that crisp, warm spring day that finally hits you and you can like smell it in the air, you know? Love. 
I was on the hunt for my favorite tea scent and I have found one that I'll talk about later. This is my springtime tea scent. And this is also my favorite gym scent other than the by Rosie Jane Rosie scent. This is White Rose by Elizabeth Arden. It is a very simple, straightforward, white floral tea scent. It's not sweet. It's just, it kind of makes my mouth water to be honest. <laughs> It smells so good. Like if you just want a really light, clean, white floral tea scent, honestly, this is it. It is called white tea for a reason. It smells exactly like that. It's the perfect gym scent. I do think the bottle, like the packaging is a little bit underwhelming. Even though it is like glass, it already has like scratches on it. And this like never like fully is on. Everything feels a little loose. I don't know. I'm a little bit bummed out by that, but I love this scent. Also, I'm gonna stop saying I love these scents because that's why we're here. Moving on. This perfume I found out about before I started doing my TikTok reviews, but I just bought it. This is my most recent purchase, so I wanted to include it. This is Angeli di Firenze by Santa Maria Novella. This perfume house was founded in 1221 in Florence, Italy. Also, if you hear that buzzing, that is construction happening outside my apartment. I don't know when that's gonna stop, so we're just gonna keep going. Angeli di Firenze, it is a fruity white floral. Again, I would say it's different from Parisian musk. Angeli di Firenze is like softer. To me, I don't get a lot of the fruit notes in it. I get a lot of just the musky white florals. I'm wearing this one today. I think it just smells so fresh. Like this in a bottle is mid-spring going into summer vibe. It's just so light. It puts me in a really good mood. It's very clean smelling, very fresh. Parisian musk is slightly heavier, which is why I say, I think of more like end of winter, beginning of spring. I don't know if any of this makes sense, but it makes sense in my mind. I got the 50 mil. I wish I got the 100 mil because I know I'm going to fly through this, but right now this is my favorite perfume I have. Okay, another spring slash summer scent is Layla Lou by by Rosie Jane. This one I will say doesn't last very long on me. Oh my gosh, it's like tangy, citrusy, musky. It has like a bite to it, like a zing when you put it on. And at first it can be kind of like a little bit overwhelming, but I will say the dry down is very, very faint and it doesn't last on me, which is a bummer. I would say that's kind of a deterrent, but I just love the smell of this. I layer it with rose I layer it with musky aldehydes. I layer it with my dead cool one. Like this is just a really light, tangy, zingy scent. This is the epitome of a summer scent to me. This and Madey or Maddie by, by Rosie Jane, which I want. This is another Fleur scent called Solar Power. Oh my God, this reminds me of summertime, family vacation on the beach in the 90s. You know, you've been like playing on the beach all day with your cousins and your family and you're sweaty and you're salty from the ocean and the air is fresh and it's just like the best day. This smells like that day in a bottle. Kids SPF. And normally I would say I'm not an SPF person only because I thrive in gloom and doom and rain and clouds. Comment below if you're a fellow pluviophile because next we're talking autumn and that's where I live and but this makes me feel like a summer gal when I'm not. Next. Okay, we're moving into my favorite section, which is the autumn scents. The first one I'll talk about is another scent by Santa Maria Novella called Tobacco Toscano. This is a very light, smoky scent. There's almost like a brown sugarness to it, but it's not sweet because we know how I feel about sweet, okay? No sweet. It's like brown sugar vanilla, but not in a sweet way. And this is probably the most vanilla in a scent that I could handle. The dry down especially is quite vanilla-y. So if that's not your jam, stay away from it. If you're like me and you can tolerate a little bit of it, this is the perfect scent. To me, the tobacco in the name, I kind of get it. I kind of get like this smoky. I think of like you're traveling, you're in Italy or you're in France and you're sitting at a cafe and you're having your cappuccino and the air is kind of chilly and you're in your beautiful long coat and you can smell like the wood burning stoves around you like mixed with that. That's the image that comes into my mind and I think it's just such a cozy, yeah just a cozy image but it is a little bit vanilla-y so warning. 
Next up, we have another Byredo scent. Well, another as in the first one I had was a Byredo dupe, but this one is Mixed Emotions by Byredo. This is like white floral smoky, like a deep smoky white floral scent. I feel like if Mixed Emotions and Tobacco Toscano were related, Tobacco would be Mixed Emotions little sister. This is a, yeah, like a white floral smoke. Mixed Emotions, I picture an Italian stone villa in the fall, and there's a beautiful stone fireplace going in the middle of the room and you're sitting there drinking your black tea or a glass of red wine and you're just smelling that smoke that's coming out and mixing with the fresh air and the crackling and popping of a fireplace. That's exactly the image that comes to mind. It is so divine. Next is one that I did not expect to like. Honestly, I am a little disappointed with myself that I like it so much only because it's so popular and so expensive. This was probably the most talked about perfume on TikTok anywhere when I first started dib dab dabbing into perfumes over there. All the TikTok reviewers and all the perfume reviewers really loved this and they tended to be reviewers who liked scents that I didn't like, like the sweet and vanilla and gourmands. But this is Delina by Parfume de Marly. Like I said, I know, I know. This is just the most ethereal, dainty scent. I picture Farah wearing it when she is Lady Farah and Akatar. It's just fairy, feminine, delicate, dainty, ethereal. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not too sweet. I've gotten probably the most compliments when I wear this one, and that bumps me out. Moving on. This is Dear Polly by Wilhelm Parfumery. I think. I was nervous to try Wilhelm because I was a little bit intimidated by the brand. I don't know why. The name kind of intimidated me. The bottles were very modern. I don't know. It just all intimidated me a little bit. But man, I've tried a bunch of scents from them and I love them. I think there were two that I wasn't a huge fan of, but even then I was like, I could wear these and survive. This is a deep, rich, tea scent. There's like a little bit of smokiness there, but yeah, in my mind, this is black tea and a little bit of smoke. And I think that combination is just perfect. I love that it's leaning a little bit more masculine. I like that it has that kind of dark smokiness. I think it's very sexy. This is a woman sitting at a bar drinking a martini in silence and she does not want to be bothered. Okay, last one for the autumn section, which is a very popular one. And that is Gris Charnel by BDK Parfum. This is a deep, dark, burgundy color that comes to mind. Think of the best date of your life and the date ends, it's fall, so you're all like all bundled up and like the leaves are turning and it's super cozy. And at the end of the night, your date takes you back to his little cabin in the woods, but not in a creepy way, in a resand Akatar way. His cologne or their cologne mixes with your body chemistry and it's just like sensual and yeah, just trust me. If you can get a sample of it, please do. I feel like it's very universal. I think, yeah, it's, it's a sexy one. Okay, now we're gonna move into my very special scents. And these are scents that just, I can't describe the feeling that I got when I first smelled them and that's why I'm gonna put them in this category. This is another tea scent and it was very expensive and an investment, but I want to talk about it. So this is Tay Long by Armani Privé. The bottle is absolutely beautiful. It's very heavy. It's glass. The top is so beautiful. This is a green tea and black tea scent in my mind. There's like a light sweetness and there's also like a darkness to it that is also a date night perfume. I found that I don't need a lot of it when I spray it on myself. If I spray too much of it, it's too overwhelming and I feel like you lose that kind of, you lose that kind of tad of sweetness that happens and it becomes way in your face. And this one, I feel like you just need a little bit on you and it adds a little bit of mystique to you. That could just be in my mind, but I also really want Wulong Sha by Nishane for now. I'm very happy with this one being like my go-to tea scent. Next is Room Service by Wilhelm Parfumery. This is a powdery scent. If you don't like powdery scent, this one is absolutely not for you, especially the dry down. The dry down is pretty much powdery. I did try the one diptyque scent that everyone was telling me, the Eau de 
you have to comment below, but the oh something, and that was too powdery for me. And I enjoy a good powdery scent. I enjoy being transported back into the little like renaissance with the with the paintings of the ladies in the flower gardens. Like I'm all for a powder moment. This is floral and powdery. A powdery floral scent. I love this scent. I think it's very light. I think you could wear it during all seasons, but especially a probably spring. It's a very happy scent to me. It's cheerful. It brings some levity. This scent just makes me really happy, which is why I include it in my last category. The last one I will talk about is a scent that another TikToker actually tagged me in because I didn't know about the brand at all. Shout out Maria. This was an investment, okay? But I have never smelled anything like it and I have never had a reaction like I did when I smelled this for the first time. That is Reflection Woman by Amouage. It is a beautiful bottle. The top has a little like purple gemstone. It is a magnetic top. It is luxe, okay? It is decadent. It is rich. It is everything I'm not. I tend to get imagery in my head quite quickly when I do smell something. And this one, I, I still don't have an image in my head. It baffles me a little bit. And I think that's part of the reason why I love it so much. It is so special. Again, you can get a sample of it, which is how I first tried it. Originally, the man reflection one was suggested to me and I also love that one. I love a good, heavy, masculine scent on a woman. Ooh! Then I smelled this one. I was like, this is woman. <laughs> This is woman. It smells delicate, but so powerful. I feel like if I could compare it to a book character, this would be Nesta when she's with Cassian, when her guard is a little bit down. That's what I picture for her. When her armor is up, I picture more of a Grisha now. I don't know. That is my personal reaction to the scent. I think it's incredibly special and I don't know what it is about it. It's a light scent. It's almost a little bit like aquatic. It's just interesting. If anything, I think of Roman baths, the steam and the marble, the cold stone and the sweating and the water. It's really special to me, but that was it. So I do have a microphone that I will be setting up and I will start creating this channel and you know, upping the, the quality. But for now, I hope this worked. I'm very excited to start this. I think this is gonna be so fun. And thank you all so much for recommending me over 500 perfumes. I obviously loved way more, but these were the ones that I actually bought slash will own a full size of someday.